Hello, school pupils. Thank you very much for all the wonderful questions that you sent uh, through to me. So I'm going to work my way through and try and answer all of them uh, for you. So we'll start with uh, what do you actually make? Uh, well, the sculptures are um, generally in very vibrant uh, colours, uh, like some of the uh, pieces uh, behind me on the, the current project uh, that I'm working on for the, the ceiling of, of an art centre. Uh, so, uh, so usually very fun and playful, um, vibrant, kind of happy, uplifting uh, colours. Uh, the themes can vary depending uh, on what the exhibition is, but generally I try to be very innovative and very experimental uh, in what I do with, uh, with each material. So inspirations, um, back at the beginning it would have been uh, Eve Klein, uh, especially his use of ultramarine, which is a, a very rich, deep uh, blue, and uh, also uh, Anish Kapoor, uh, a British um, Indian uh, artist, um, uh, world renowned, and um, he creates gigantic big uh, sculpture installations. And whenever I was studying art at university, he would definitely have been um, the, the biggest uh, inspiration. Uh, in terms of today, uh, as I'm a, a working artist, uh, I would actually draw the most inspiration from my uh, artist uh, friends because um, we would chat about art whenever we visit each other's uh, studios. So uh, the likes of Mark Revels, um, Gail Ritchie and Kieran McGill, they would be three of my closest art friends. Uh, so it's, it's important to actually have uh, people that you can trust uh, to, to get a, an honest opinion from and we, so we would chat uh, quite a lot and uh, they would definitely be my, my biggest inspirations as a, as a practicing artist. So New York is uh, it's a wonderful city. It's one of the art capitals of the world. There's there's New York, uh, there's London obviously, uh, there's Berlin, um, Beijing uh, as well. So I have exhibited um, in, in all of these cities, and um, New York is is particularly uh, a special. And um, yeah, it's it's very inspirational whenever you go and visit the art galleries and museums um, in New York. Uh, you can actually learn uh, quite a lot and, and be very, very inspired uh, by the amazing city. In contrast, Belfast is actually quite a small city in, in, in the UK. So um, it's actually it's quite easy to get um, to get int integrated into the, the actual art scene so, um, so you can um, get to know people uh, fairly fairly quickly and um, you can you can enjoy a bit of success uh, in the kind of the small art world uh, of Belfast so it's, uh, it's certainly very very different Belfast from from the big uh, major uh, art capitals uh, of the world uh, but the, but the people are very friendly uh, and very 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 supportive uh, so it uh, it was definitely a very a good springboard for me to, to begin my art career in, in Belfast and then get to enjoy travelling all around the world doing lots of exciting projects. sculpture for 10 Downing Street, that was an invitation to uh, create a, a brand new sugar cube sculpture uh, in response to, to the building. And the, uh, the exhibition was curated by Janice Blackburn, who's one of the, the top uh, craft curators uh, in the UK, and she's based in London herself. So she had contacted me asking if I would make a piece for the show inside 10 Downing Street, which was to be a celebration of the best of British craft and design. So um, I was obviously extremely excited at the chance of actually just getting inside Downing Street, let alone actually, you know, bringing a sculpture in, but just to actually walk through uh, the front door. So, um, so I immediately then started working on plans for what I would actually make. And um, it, I very quickly realized that there was no point in doing the entire 
building because the, the front door is so iconic. It's known the world over. So I decided, OK, we'll just focus on the Georgian door with the, the beautiful fan light, um, the little foot scrapers uh, at the bottom, uh, the door knocker. Uh, so all those kind of little um, miniature details which uh, would really help to to capture um, the, the kind of essence of, of 10 Downing Street and obviously the door is uh, is black in itself but uh, but it was going to be transformed um, with with sugar so we're, we're going to have this surface of sparkling sugar crystals uh, instead of the normal kind of black uh, door so it was a, a really really fun project to do and I spent about six weeks actually making uh, the, the sculpture um, because it was really, really important to get it as, as good as possible. Um, and then uh, got to bring it over uh, and actually got to um, stand outside the front door to get a photograph with it. And then um, got to go inside and place it on, on display. And it was uh, set up just inside the front door on the left. Um, and then we all, actually all of us, all the artists and designers, craft makers, we then got a tour of the of the entire building which was which was amazing so um so we got to walk up the the staircase where there's the 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 photographs of all the previous uh, british prime ministers um and then up to the very top floor which is all the state rooms which is absolutely incredible so it's, it's actually like a palace up there huge big high ceilings uh beautiful furniture uh gigantic big rooms um so it was a really 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 enjoyable uh, experience and definitely one of the highlights uh, Astronaut of the future, uh, yeah, that's definitely the the largest uh, sculpture that I've made outdoors, and it's uh, it's on top of the uh, of an art centre in Uri in Northern Ireland. Uh, so it was a great opportunity to work on the roof, and I had been thinking about that for a, a couple of years, and actually approached the art centre to ask for permission uh, to make a piece uh, up there. And I spent probably about three weeks uh, in total working on it. So um, so it was a good question about the scale. How do you actually work on that scale? And uh, for that particular piece, um, there was no way for me to get a, a bird's eye view of the actual piece as I was making it. So I actually used a, a, just a, an A4 sheet, which was a, a drawing I had made of uh, the shape that I wanted to create. And then I, broke it down into a grid uh, and I, I, I then made it piece by piece on the grid and uh, that makes it a lot easier because then you know everything's in in proportion uh, otherwise what you could find is that the the big astronaut uh, helmet may end up being completely out of proportion um, in relation to the arms uh, or to, to the legs uh, so that was simply a, a grid uh, structure that I created and then uh, built it up built it piece by piece effectively, uh, working from the top um, all, all the way down. And uh, the plan actually is that whenever Google Maps do their uh, their update in 2022, that that will then be captured. Uh, so it'll, it'll forever be a part of the, the, the Muri um, the Muri map uh, in that area. So whenever people look to, to try and find the art centre, they'll actually spot this giant astronaut and uh, and the world as well. Obviously, planet Earth is down uh, in, in the corner as well. We did have uh, drones fly over the top to, to capture it whenever it was uh, completed, but we're definitely excited uh, to see whenever it appears on, on Google Maps in the next edition. <laughs> So it's actually really, really difficult to pick um, just a couple of, of favourite commissions because there have been so many uh, amazing projects all around the world uh, with a lot of really fantastic people to work with. Um, but if, if, if I had to choose just, say, three, um, I would say the uh, Sugar Metropolis project um, at the um, Sugar Hill Museum of Art and Storytelling in New York City and that was up in, in Harlem uh, and that was in 2014 uh, and that was really 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 special because we got to work with the with the local um, community there and uh, there was another Sugar Metropolis project actually um, in um, 
the following year in the Centre Pompidou uh, in Paris. Uh, that was also uh, really, really incredible. It's, um, it's such an amazing um, art museum. And uh, if you're ever in Paris, I would definitely encourage you uh, to go along to it because uh, on, on all the trips I've made to it, I've been really, really inspired um, by the incredible art on, on display. So to be part of that museum during that exhibition was definitely really, really, really special. And the third uh, was a, a waterfall, um, a giant waterfall sculpture for a museum in in Ukraine, which is in the capital in Kiev, uh, and that was a project I did with um, with my sculpture partner, uh, Mark Rebels. In fact, all three of these favourites are have all been done with my sculpture partner because these are giant big projects. So it's it's actually far too much for just one person to do by themselves. Uh, and it's also a lot more exciting for me to get to work um, with another amazing sculptor like Mark. Uh, so uh, so the two of us created this giant waterfall and. Um, there were over 10,000 um, rolled up pieces of yellow paper uh, used uh, to create it. And they actually all represented uh, someone who had lost their life in, in the conflict in Ukraine. There's been a war there since, uh, since 2014 and uh, over in the eastern side, uh, with, uh, which borders Russia. Uh, so there's been over 10,000 lives lost. And the idea behind the waterfall was that uh, each little yellow roll represented a life and, and as if a, a spirit or a river of souls was, was continuing into another realm. So the idea was that it was meant to be quite an uplifting um, kind of special uh, sculpture, um, but it did have significance uh, that, that it did represent lives uh, lost. Um, so that was definitely, definitely one of the, the top highlights. So I, I definitely like this question about did you have any artworks that didn't work out? Um, because it's so, so important to realise that if if you want to push the boundaries of art, um, it's really important that you constantly experiment with, with new materials and try out new ideas, uh, no matter what art form you're working in. OK, and you actually have to feel you have to make mistakes along the way and you have to try things that just don't work out in order for you to keep pushing the boundaries and then you find something that actually uh, does. Um, so for example, um, when it came to the, the sugar cube sculptures, they did not just magically um, pop into my head, oh let's make these carved sugar cube sculptures because no one else had ever done that before. No, it actually started with little smarties uh, to begin with. So I created this little smarty house uh, with a red door. Um, blue windows, um, little yellow chimney. And um, it actually, it I was making it as part of a little video art piece. Uh, and the plan was that I had cut the tops off matches and I had created a little line, a little row, and it went all around the house and, and I lit it. And the plan was that the, the flames would, would travel along and then it would, it would set the house, so, house on fire uh, and all the colors would kind of mix into each other and then they would melt and then they would pour out. Um, and I thought it was a great idea in my head, but it, it, it just didn't work. In reality, it just, uh, the little house barely got scorched. Um, and, um, and even just the sticking of the Smarties together, it wasn't, um, it was never going to be that permanent. It was actually quite hard because of the shape of the little Smarty suite uh, to actually stick them together. Um, so that, that in itself, you could say was a failure, but actually I don't even look on it as a failure or a mistake because um, because it, it was a stepping stone. So it actually led on to me then buying a box of sugar cubes and trying it with that. Uh, and at that point, I fell in love then with the sugar cubes. And uh, I started then experimenting with could I actually cut and actually carve the sugar cubes into these intricate shapes. And, um, and yeah, so and then in a sense, kind of the rest is history, I just kept kind of pushing the boundaries of what was possible uh, with sugar cubes. So, um, so yeah, so back to that question, yeah, about making mistakes and uh, things not working out. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and it's so important that we do that because uh, if we only ever do what we, we can already do, uh, we're actually just staying in our, our comfort zone. We're never actually pushing beyond that. Uh, so we would just spend the rest of our life doing what, what's kind of easy and what what comes to us naturally. Uh, so that's never really going to expand kind of our our understanding of art and, uh, and our own ability because it's it's 
so important to keep pushing ourselves uh, and we actually can find that is far far more rewarding uh, to push ourselves beyond what, what we think we can do uh, rather than just staying kind of safe and, and just doing what what we, we think is possible um, because there's really no limit to the imagination you know so uh, so I would say yeah keep keep experimenting keep keep pushing forward Okay, so how do I decide on the materials for an artwork and uh, where do I get them from? Um, it, it really, it just depends on, on what the, the theme is for an exhibition. Uh, so if, if it's something quite architectural, then I usually use uh, sugar cubes because I can build them up like little bricks uh, and obviously cut and carve them. Um, if it's not architectural, if it's something required that's maybe something more abstract um, like actually what I'm working on at the moment uh, for, for an art centre then I, I will think of another material something more more appropriate uh, so for a ceiling sculpture which is what these pieces are for they're actually made with um, A4 foam sheets so it's very very light and they're then cut uh, into about six or eight sections uh, and then they're all attached into uh, chicken wire and then they're suspended up on the ceiling. So it's all extremely light. And um, it means if there was some catastrophe and you know some came crashing down, uh, they wouldn't actually injure uh, anyone. Um, they're, they're very, very, very soft uh, material. And the same is true of, of wool uh, as well. So for some of the wool sculptures, which can vary from small scale up to large scale. Um, so just, um, yeah, it depends on the nature of where the actual art is going to be exhibited and what the actual theme is. Um, for, for the show or for, for the display. Um, and uh, sometimes it's um, the, the materials are ordered um, by bulk. Um, so uh, a huge big uh, pallet will come with a forklift truck and they will deliver gigantic amounts of, of a material. Um, and at other times, if it's kind of for smaller works, um, I'll just go and buy the materials myself at a, um, at a local shop or store. In terms of transporting the sculptures, uh, they do usually require a lot of bubble wrap and a lot of padding uh, around them when they're being moved uh, moved around. Um, the uh, the small sugar cube sculptures are actually protected uh, in a in a plastic display case. I'll, I'll show you an example here actually. So this actually um yeah you can see so this this totally preserves um, the the sugar um, so no damage will actually come uh, to the sugar at all uh, so um so it'll actually just last forever the the glue uh, that i use it's um, it's an adhesive which actually creates a permanent binding uh, between uh, the sugar cubes so it won't actually break down it's only vulnerability is, is if somebody was to throw uh, water over the sugar and then it would dissolve a bit of of the surface but as long as a display case is actually on the sugar sculpture then it's fine so uh, so there's pieces in museums permanently on show uh, larger pieces than that um you know about a meter and a half long and say about a meter and a half wide and they're in giant big uh, display cases so uh, so they'll always survive yeah permanently the, the sugar metropolis projects we were um yeah we just put the the sugar cubes back into storage um at, at the end of those projects because that was a that was a touring um show So art can be a, a really powerful vehicle to raise uh, awareness about uh, certain issues and um, certainly um, quite a few of my art, my sculptures uh, have dealt with, with issues of, of conflict and, um, and peace and, and, and reconciliation. So, um, so we, do, we do have a voice uh, as artists and I'm fortunate in that a lot of the projects that I do uh, tends to get covered by the press through uh, lots of TV interviews and radio, magazines, books um, and online articles. Uh, so, uh, so yes, it's, it's, it's great to have that opportunity um, to, uh, to try and be, uh, create a kind of a positive um, kind of view that to come through uh, the art um, and to kind of be broadcast then uh, to the wider uh, public. Uh, so there's a, another question that you've raised about the COP26. Uh, it's great that, uh, that that some of you actually got to go along to, to 10 Downing Street and actually chat uh, to the Prime Minister about it. Um, 
yeah, there's uh, there's so much I think we can still do uh, in terms of trying to save the planet. Uh, I mean, I don't even own a car, uh, so I actually get about on foot. Uh, I have a bike to cycle on, um, and then I will take the train uh, and, and the bus. Um, I think there, there's things that we can do on a very... Um, just a very individual uh, level. Um, I mean, I, I know lots of people that will, will take a car just to travel what would only be a five or 10 minute walk. Um, and it's actually much healthier to just to be out in the fresh air and actually to walk if we're only going to pick up uh, some groceries. Um, in terms of um, government and, and local councils, um, I would love to see um, a stronger drive to get more uh, cycle lanes uh, into cities and, and towns. Uh, I know a few cities in the UK have been really, really good at this, but um, but I think generally there's still uh, a lot of more work uh, that could be done um, in, in terms of promoting kind of a, a healthier lifestyle and uh, to get more people um, actually uh, cycling uh, as well. Um, solar power, I'm a huge big fan of solar power as well. Um, I'd love to see it get pushed um, uh, to a far, far greater extent uh, in this, this decade, certainly up to 2030, I think in these next um, eight to nine years, uh, I would love to see a much bigger drive uh, in terms of, of solar power. So usually when making art, I actually have um, classical music on because I find it's it's very, very, very soothing. And um, because there's no lyrics in it, it means I can actually just concentrate purely on, on making the art. So uh, yes, um, for some of the big sculpture projects, I would definitely have um, my sculpture partner working with me on them. That's Mark Revels. Uh, and also, uh, usually we will have a team of volunteers as well in whatever city uh, that we're actually uh, working in. In terms of what friends and family, I think, yeah, they, they love uh, the art uh, that I make and uh, they're extremely uh, supportive. Um, they love to see uh, what new ideas will get, uh, get dreamt up. So during the lockdown, I was actually extremely busy making a, a giant golf tee um, artwork for a, a, a client in America, in, in Texas. It was, to, it was to go into a brand new uh, building. Uh, that was being created in, in Dallas. Uh, so I was uh, actually flat out uh, working on commissions and other art projects uh, throughout all of the actual lockdowns uh, and still continue to be uh, extremely busy. So, um, so I'm working on uh, this piece here, which I've mentioned before, which is for a, a ceiling in an art centre. And um, yeah, images of that will actually get uploaded onto my website um, in December uh, of this year. So at secondary level education, you'll actually be doing lots of drawing, uh, painting and working uh, three dimensionally. So what I would say is, and I suppose it echoes back to what I was saying at the beginning um, of this little chat, is to uh, try your best to experiment. Uh, and sometimes that could maybe be um, mixing things in with a glue and, and adding it to the surface if you're working on a flat piece of paper um, or card. Um, if you're working on, on sculpture, then it could be experimenting with some unusual material. I mean, one of the, the, the beautiful things about sculpture is that you can actually use absolutely any material. There's no limit whatsoever. So uh, if you consider all the materials in the entire world, uh, anything is actually uh, effectively at your disposal, uh, as long as your imagination can conjure it up and uh, you can find a way of, you know, attaching different elements together. Uh, so what I would say is, yeah, uh, experiment as much as you can and uh, you'll actually find that you get a lot of fun and enjoyment out of that approach. Uh, and that's definitely what I would uh, recommend. Uh, so um, thank you very much once again for all the questions uh, today. I really enjoyed uh, answering them and uh, I hope you all have a creative year ahead. Thank you, bye.